This is the island of Bonholm, southeast of Denmark. This is a castle on Bonholm. It's said to be the biggest castle ruin in Northern Europe. And this is us, a small family in a big world. It's late November, cold and wet. Today we're going to go visit an eco community living in the middle of this small island. The eco village is called Fleeskorn. With everyone, we are 13 adults and 13 kids also, I think, actually. Oh, wow. Yeah. Good harmony. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So now we are in, in the area where we live right now, our little temporary village. A lot of the residents are away and the Eco village is quietly enjoying a low-key weekend. We have five families over here, one down there. And then we have a communal space in these buildings here. Even though outside is dark and cold, there's a warm and cozy atmosphere inside the communal space where we have a chance to meet and talk to the residents. Not everybody wants to be filmed, but everyone is so welcoming. This feels so special. Then we have a garden and we have a space for the volunteers and uh, a lot of empty buildings that needs renovating. <laughs> How, why could all, why could all the kids be? Because I could, I have only yeah, seen I three think kids. They're not home because I haven't seen them. But I don't know where they are. Or otherwise they're inside. Did you go inside? Well, I like, could only see three sho two shoes. Um, <laughs> two <laughs> pairs. Just shoes. go in, open the door and go and have a look. Lisa. Yeah, because there's one room there, and then when you go in the next one, that's the kitchen. They could be in there. I just bought this little trailer, the grey one, um, because I needed to be out here somehow. Uh, and I was alone with my son, so it was fine. It's just like eight, nine square meters. <laughs> and then I got a boyfriend who also had a daughter that wanted to move out here. Then <laughs> nine square meters was not enough. So we, we just built an extra little hut from scratch. There's some old tanks that were here already. <laughs> and uh, we're like, what should we use them for? Should we just scrap them? Should we plant trees? And we just kept playing in them. So we thought, okay, let's <laughs> do the concept. So we built it into a playhouse and put a little slide over there. So this is our bedroom and we just built it from scratch. Yeah, recycled windows and uh, recycled ti uh, roof tiles and yeah. <laughs> uh, so this is our bedroom. Yeah, and uh, the kids sleep downstairs, we sleep upstairs and uh, yeah, it, qu it works quite well. And then we just have all our clothes and stuff in here. That takes a lot of space. I'm like learning now how to build with little projects like this. And then I was also hired together with my boyfriend to build on, a, on another house here for another family. So that's like how I, <laughs> I both earn money and learn how to build. So when, soon I'll, we didn't really start our own house yet, but um, gathering experience. <laughs> yeah, then we have <laughs> our very messy terrace here, which is, well, the stuff that's not space for us put in. And then we have our kitchen in here. So yeah. So we have a place where we can cook and sit and eat. And before we had the, I had the bed up here, mm -hmm. and the storage space underneath, and all the stuff that was in there was basically in here. <laughs> and then four people, it was uh, totally <laughs> cramped. But now I feel like, oh, <laughs> can actually be here. I really love that view. <laughs> then you can see the stream also, and in the winter when it's snowy. And, uh, no, it's so cozy. Yeah. It's so cozy. Most of my life I've been I've been traveling a lot and I also lived in a small community in Copenhagen and I think I've always been really attracted to communal living. Mm -hmm. I also grew up in a community, oh. my parents lived in a community when I was small and uh, I never had like a clear idea of what exactly do I want to make but then um, my mom moved to Bornholm and I spent the summer here and I really really liked the place and then one of my friends that I made over here she just put up the like this was for sale <laughs> and uh, we were like wow this looks amazing and I sent it to my brother 
and he was just like, yeah, we are in. <laughs> and my mother just sold the house in Copenhagen, so she had the money to buy the place. Oh, wow. And it was like, you have two weeks to give a, an offer. And uh, it was like a closed offer. We didn't know <laughs> what other people had offered. So we just, we just gave an offer. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, then we got it. <laughs> and wow. we were like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> there were some people here in the beginning that left. And at some point, I was completely alone. All the people that had been here, some had to leave because of COVID. There was a lot of Swedish people and then, and then nobody just came back and <laughs> I was just all alone. I thought, yeah, um, what to do? And then I just wrote, okay, now I write out my vision. I was very much like, I didn't want to create the frames. I wanted to create it with people. Yeah. A new wave of people came and yeah, so there came a lot of really good people in and uh, and now we got a Andelsbolig for Ening, <laughs> like an association. Oh, wow. and, uh, Oh, so it's run like an Andy's Bowley. Yeah. Ah, well clever. Yeah, and then we have a locate plan, like, yeah, the politicians are working on giving us a plan of what we can do out here. So we don't know exactly what we can do, but no. we are working on it and they're very positive. Cool. So, uh, so it's taking shape now. Yeah. And also with the people that come, the people that go, because they find out they want something slightly different, it's getting more and more concrete what, what this place is. Yeah, yeah. And um, I think I felt like I didn't want to put the frames too tight, I want to see what does the place want actually. <laughs> at that point when I was all alone, I at some point I just went out in the forest and I, I what do you want, what, what do you want to be here? And I just felt this sense like, I, I want you. <laughs> okay, nice. Then I, yeah, I feel okay, yeah. <laughs> oh wow. Go for it. Yeah, we also have these three pillars, main pillars, where one of them is economic freedom. Okay. and and. That is because we want to get out of this hamster wheel and we want to have time to be here yeah. with our kids and with each other and that's why we want the prices as low as possible. Uh, second is uh, radical sustainability, uh -huh. which yeah means sustainability but yeah. like taking it in the yeah. full step. And the last is free and self-directed learning, mm -hmm. which is both uh, because we want to have a homeschool community, like unschooling most of it, but the how people want we have a freedom of so it's not just unschooling no, no. <laughs> um, freedom to learn yeah and and it's also for adults so we want to make workshops here and invite workshop holders and and also share with the with the society mm -hmm. so yeah so to be a, a place of uh, learning and experimentation this the society is, is getting a bit stuck in its way and i think we really need to find new ways and if we give our children the possibility of learning something else than we learn, <laughs> like follow their own, we can actually learn something from them and maybe they can come up with a <laughs> better solution than that is right now. Yeah. Big thanks to Freya and everybody at Friesgorn for welcoming us into their home. If you like this video, support us by giving it a like and subscribe to get updates on our new videos.